all right, Mateo and I are playing around with some stuff and we got kind of confused and I didn't have the questions organized. So we did a little mini episode, little mini catch up episode. I went on a date. He caught us up in our love life. But this is mainly my fault. I'm in a weird Play. mood. We're for time. So we're I, both I in our periods. So and we had a special guest, Patty. Hey, guys. Hey, girl. When are you, so Patty tells us about his his love life. Australian love. Australian love. Yeah, this is my fault. I feel bad. I'll make it up, Gemma. And 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 with that as our intro, <laughs> buckle up. And buckle up. Here's a special mini episode. Here we go. <laughs> hey, this is Mateo Lane. I'm Emma Wilman. And this is Inside the Closet. Inside the Closet. <laughs> we'll, we're starting at one minute in. This no, we're a, starting right now. This is, and we're back. This is it. And we're back. <laughs> How you doing? <sighs> I'm doing well. San Francisco was 12 hours long. Well, I don't think flight. I've quite. I don't think I've recovered. I mean, I we didn't even drink. I got like right. a lemon tart, and I'm exhausted. We had. I like that you think it was the lemon tart that exhausted you because we flew in six hours. We did the podcast show, we did the stand up show, and then we flew right back. So that was a lot. But doing the live podcast was so fun. It was so much fun, and the people came out like be still my shocked. beating heart. Thank you guys so much. I was shocked anyone showed up. I just like don't even know how to. Like, I was like, if anyone comes, I'm marrying that person. And so we have 90 people, people to marry at yeah. both shows. I can't believe it. Um, and we got to announce there, which makes sense because we're going to air that episode. You would have already heard it now, but that we're both doing the Netflix yeah. 15 minute special. Netflix 15. So we go down. Well, that's cool that we get to do it together. Yeah. And on the same show that they put us on the same show. Yeah. So if any of you guys want to come, February 6th, we're filming it in Atlanta. And they gave us... Um, like a, we can get tickets for people and stuff. Yeah, I have to put the link up on my Instagram. And Likewise, Twitter. but it'll be fun. I know it's going to be a good time. I hope. Well, we're staying at the <laughs> W. Woo! So I hope that um, they have a gym. That's all I care about. Of course about. they do. I'm trying to look good for this goddamn special. Me too. I think I'm going to go tanning before it. Really? Well, because I look seasick. No. Yes, I look seasick. But what happens if you go tanning and there's a problem? Because before prom, there were already a lot of problems with me going to prom. I, I know. I've been but tanning But I went tanning before. and it was a disaster. You I looked like went, Donald Trump. You went too long. Yes, I'm going to go on the lowest level for the shortest amount and just do three days of that. Well, you and know what? And then you get a little bit of color. I want to do that too then. But does your skin tan? Because my skin tans. Uh. Do you, like, do you tan or no? I think I do. Are you sure? I don't know. You know who's listening to our podcast is Bob the Drag Queen. Bob, what's up, Bob? Finally started Big listening. Fan. He has lots of questions for you. Oh, no. Just lots. I, have, I just want to apologize. He can't even believe that you're a human. <laughs> Me neither, Bob. I'm having problems. I mean, problems. he really is like flabbergasted by but... your experiences <laughs> and all the trans talk and everything. He's wildly fascinated well, with Bob you. Well, Bob and I met when I hosted something. As we said. Yeah. We I hosted something a while back and that and uh, I remember meeting him at that and it was really good. So do you have okay? Because I don't. <sighs> we got a lot to catch up on. How stuff in your relationship world? I mean, I I Facetimed the Spaniard yesterday and we both started crying. Really? I just really like like we're just madly in love with each other. Is the crying because I'm happy? It it's it's, it's because you're happy or is it? Because I'm overwhelmed. Okay, so it's not like things are hard. No, no, or... no, no, no. Things aren't hard. They, and he even gave me like. You know, I was saying, because I'm so insecure, I'm going to lose him. Yeah, he's You're he's, telling him that? Yeah, because I had therapy, and he told me I should tell him. But, I mean, he's all echoing the same thing. And he said, you know, now that I'm back in Spain, I have to acclimate my life, and I can't just, like, be consumed with you all day. And I'm like, that makes total sense. I was like, you and know, so. And makes it more sustainable. Because it's, it's really hard for the both of us. Yeah. I just have never felt this way, and I'm wondering if I'm going crazy. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, but all my senses are kind of heightened. Like yeah. everything. I'm extra anxious. I'm extra, like, I cried a Folgers coffee commercial. But in a good way. I mean, you know, my therapist was like, oh, you're actually feeling. Right. Because I don't feel, I was like not feeling for a while. I you was just kind of, like, I was a little Temple Grandin. Just blocking everything off. Yeah. I was I was sleeping in a squeeze box. How often are you guys talking? That was a great joke, Emma, but I, I don't understand know what a squeeze you have no, no reference to it. What's if this? anyone knows Temple Granite, she talks like this. She's oh, okay. um, the autistic animal husbandry expert. She invented yeah. the squeeze box for for cattle to be held tightly before they die so it calms their nervous system so they don't know they're dying. And wow. then she and herself, because she likened her nervous system to um, animals, she sleeps she sleeps in a squeeze box. Because oh, she like... doesn't want to be she doesn't want human contact. I guess. But she likes the feeling of being held so she had a squeeze box wait maybe if i got a squeeze box and the realistic se sex robot then i really don't need anybody you know 
because that was one thing that was missing with the sex robot. You know, what's interesting is that I to- I have to. T- I have so to- many people are tweeting at us about this sex robot. Yes, and, and I, I don't. And it's I appreciate not- that people aren't being super judgy because I'm not saying. What, I- are, what are you? As a, what are you gonna do with a sex robot? I'll tell you. Be- I'll tell you exactly. I've thought what? about it. What? I will prop it up on the couch. And, you know, I was thinking, like, when I come back, because I come back at, like, different hours of the evening, like, it's not a set schedule, then I will come in, the sex robot, maybe if it could turn its head, that would be lovely. And you then, don't think that's fucking creepy as fuck that a robot no, sitting but, on the couch upright, arms stuck out, almost like a Barbie doll, would, and to, its head just like, it, looking it, at you? It's realistic. So realistic? It's supposed to be a very realistic. So I would like it if it turned or showed some kind of sign of life. And then I'd be like, hey, maybe give it a kiss in the cheek. Girl, you haven't even got this. But the glorious thing would that it would not then proceed to launch into bitching at me and being like, turn the light off. Da, 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 da. So and, you just don't want a hen pecking. And I want positive affirmation. So if like every now and then. It's not a Furby. You, in, can't, you can't tell it what to say. It's in, there for sex. <laughs> No, they, it's not just a sex robot. I think that you can, because I think, and in the apartment, if it could Emma, say, you are funny. Well, Emma, I, <laughs> you are the man. I Emma, was hoping you would say every now and then, like you're doing a good job. Emma, and then Emma, I, Emma, <laughs> that's as Emma. Good. What happens if it malfunctions like that? Emma, oh, then we got. Then I'm gonna put Emma, out in the street. Emma, if you Emma, see a sex robot Emma, just tweaking out in Emma, the street, Emma, Emma, you have to deal with the problem. Right. Emma, what Emma. if it goes nuts and tries to kill me? <laughs> yeah. Then I'd sue. And then what if it's like a parrot? You teach it the wrong things, and then it's but at they the have corner. Ones where they're it's like, at the corner for the trash, and all of a sudden it's like Emma in my hole. Emma, Emma right, Wilman, right. Emma Wilman. Oh God. In my ho- Emma, yes, you are daddy, a man. Yes, da- yeah. You're like, no! like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You are good at math. You're not dumb because you were in special ed. Like, oh God. So <laughs> you want the robot to no, tell you you're not? I wanted to tell me idiot? I'm doing a good job. That's what I want. Your mother can tell you you're doing a good job. Right. And that's yet, not a re- that's what I want. And yet, no. Although she's pretty, I called her and told her I was nervous about Netflix. I said, I'm really nervous about it. What are you nervous it. about? You know, I am not nervous in the slightest. Maybe there's something wrong with me. No, that's I think good. I'm just thinking of the Spaniard. Oh, see, so I've got to tell you. So it's in the past two weeks. So I think it was, so about, you're going to get a kick out of how I met this person because I went on a date. Craigslist, bathroom no. stall, no. in a basement, no. third world country, also, where? Because you certainly didn't pull the same <laughs> book at the library. You've never met someone normal, Emma. Well, check this out. This is pretty normal. Instagram? No. I love it. So what it was, three years ago, I was on the gay pride flow. It's already not normal. I was on a gay pride flow. There's all these lesbians, obviously. Hello. And I saw one that I thought was cute. I said, I like that one. But I had a girlfriend and she had a girlfriend. Yes. And then a year later, we're on the same flow. I said, I think that little motherfucker's cute. And I remember we talked real quick, but I don't really remember it. And then I remember I had just gotten past the cellar and I went, we, the pride ended and then the float was going on. And then I went back and I was like, I'm going to go see if she wants to go to the cellar with me. So I like, like trekked through gray pride to find this person. And then I saw her like waddling around with uh, her girlfriend. So I'm like, all right. So then one year later, I was on the float. She wasn't there. What float do you go the on? Go, it was the Go Pro, Go Magazine float, which I'm never doing again. Oh, I was going to say, can I do a float with you? We should get our own float. Just M- Mateo and Emma? Yeah. And a robot, apparently, I think. And just a sex You could invite your s- the Spaniard, it? and then I could have my robot. I'll be in Spain at the end of J- June. But I know, that's I'm so excited. going for a wedding. Oh. I'm going to Spain next month. In right. February 22nd, I'll be in Spain. I love that. It's going to be so I fun. I just want it to come now. I know. it's Love is so exciting. But so I went on... Um, so then I, she likes some of my stuff on Facebook, which to me means I want to fuck. No, she likes some of my stuff on Facebook, so then I like some of her stuff on Facebook. And then uh, she said she liked the comedy seller, so like you should come to a show sometime. She came to a show, and then the day after she came to the show, I texted her this. Tell, oh, I te- I shared it with you. I texted, and Patty's in here. I'd be interested what he thinks of this too. Patty, say hi. Hey guys. Hey guys. You have hey. to speak into the microphone and put the headphones on. Is this even on though? Yes, it's oh. on. Hey. No, Hello. is it on? The beautiful Patty is here. Yeah, it's on. Oh, hey. Hey, hey guys. Patty was in the Green Room episode. <laughs> yes. He's the one that looks like a mermaid with a, uh, with Ariel with a mustache. The most beautiful. So this is what I said. Now tell me, because people seem to think it was weird. So we met at the cellar, and like it was like, you know, she just got out of a three-year relationship one month ago. Every lesbian is always just getting out of a three-year relationship. Right. So we meet, but we didn't really flirt. We said goodbye, and like I hug goodbye. Now I'm kind of like always like I'm a I guess Temple Grandin too. I'm kind of like businessy. Like I don't, you know. I'll be like, uh, Temple Grand is not to business. I gave a hug, but then I texted. I want to try kissing. 
Wait you a minute. Text, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just texted her. Hey, I wanted to. This is the girl this I just met. Yeah. So, but that didn't go well, Patty. But the thing is this, back in college, I used to use that line all the time and girls thought it was cute and funny. They're like, hmm, and then I would go in for the kiss and then then it, I would Did play notice, dumb and then I'd be a good kisser and they'd be like, well. Did you notice the change in my physical? Or, did you? Because now I know who we're talking about. I'm yeah. not a fan. She's half Italian and Spanish. <laughs> so she's Part gonna be, me, she's she's gonna me and my me. B- boyfriend from Spain. Yeah, but she's cute. She's a hairdresser. She's very adorable, very mm-hmm. nice. I felt... I didn't like the answer she gave you. So yeah. to me, I Wait, didn't like did, it. What did she say? So let me pull these up. So she wrote like, ha, ha, ha. I didn't get that vibe from you at all. It's basically. And then I was like, oh, hmm, what the hell does that mean? Because do you think it's weird for me to text? Do you want to try kissing? Because I was just trying to be like, no, I, don't think I that's wanted weird. to try that's kissing. Cute. Thank you. You were like, what oh, is, I'm into it. Think? We should kiss. Blah, blah, I mean, blah. I think it's kind of cute. But I mean, if that was your like college tactic, like maybe. I got to step it up. Not, so what do I yeah, say now? I don't know. May, wait. So you just texted her and you're like, I'd like to try kissing as in let's meet to like hook up. Or do you want to like see date that's her? What, I just want to see if we have any chemistry before we date more. And also this is the other thing I asked on the date, which I need to stop doing. Here's my thing. She mentioned porn and then I like wouldn't let that go. I was like, what kind of porn do you like? I love porn. I like this kind of porn. I like that kind of porn. You took it too far. And then I was trying to, I'm trying to suss out what the hell she's into to see if we're sexually compatible. But I think I go for that too quick. I, I think you jumped in too quick. And one time we were texting, she said she's like, she's like no choking. And like she said, she didn't like penetration. I was like, oh, motherfucker. She didn't like penetration? So maybe she's the top of the relationship. No, I don't that, know. Then she, maybe and she's she also the me. man. she kissed me. Last night we went on a date and she kissed me. Oh, wait. So you kissed? We kissed. Who made the move first? She did. She said that she needs to do that for personal reasons. Okay. So, so said, then, all right. I don't think this is going to work, Emma, because you're too similar in your approach to women. She's still very feminine. Yeah, but do you feel like you're like fighting for dominance? Do you feel no, like I like you're I like humping let her, each other's legs? I let her like <laughs> do it. She was at a bar and she like leaned in and kissed me, and I did it back. And then she, but she seemed there's like seems like a lot of walls up. Being, yeah, she just got out of a three year relationship. Right. So should I just like not even go for this? Well, I don't think you can. I don't think you don't. I just think you have to put the pressure off of you for making this such a thing. I would like to try to have sex before I go to L.A. I could think I say let's that? Just relax. Well, I think you have two She's options. acting like she a gay just, man. Well, but here's the thing. She just got out of her late. Yeah, but I mean, everybody needs sex. It's, it's like, like I'm 32. You know? I'm not saying that, but I'm I just saying like sex- the, appro- the approach. I haven't been yeah. sexually active for like a while. Well, no. If she Minus Boston man, Girl. She just sent a body part right away. Yeah. Instead of let's kiss, it would just been like, you know, crotch shot. Dick. If I thought that that would do anything, then, you know, have I Have you ever sent a pussy pic? Mm, no. No? I don't think people do that. I've seen pictures send of me wearing a strap a on before. Really? Yeah. I would love to see that photo. I'll find one. <laughs> <laughs> I used to back in the day when I was big pimping. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was killing it. Confidence through the roof. You know? It's hard for the more masculine lesbian one to know what kind of... What do I send a picture of? Like my forearm? Like I got nothing. Because the girl one can be like, like breasts, butt. Like doing I'm a this. Little on and the, then the, I'm a little on the... Uh, let me just say this. I think she was really beautiful. She was really sweet when I met her. I didn't necessarily like the responses in the texts, and I, I get the I get the vibe that maybe she's just not ready to be. You're not even listening to what I'm, I'm saying. I'm trying to pull Emma. up her text. I'm trying to oh, pull up her text. I just don't think she's in the. I don't know if she's in the place. I see what you're saying. You would like just like a, a fling hookup, mutual like let's just have fun with our bodies, blah blah. You're and not I've looking never for really anything done, more. Yeah, I mean, if something more develops into that, then fine. But I'd like to like have sex to like just like. Just yeah. to have sex. Get it going. Then right. why don't you just say that? <sighs> I mean, I know that sounds crazy. What do I but, like, say? Just be direct and ask for what you want. Just say, you know, I don't know like where we're at. I don't know that this is going to be a thing, but I do know that I want to like explore this physically. Like, let's like fucking see what's up. Like, oh she just got God. out of a relationship, so like she may not even be looking, which is why it's probably so difficult to date her because she's yeah, made it she's like clear. not allowing herself to be vulnerable. But like, you know, she said that she, she's like made it like pretty clear that. Uh, She's like that. She doesn't just do casual hookup stuff. Okay, so she oh. doesn't do casual hookup stuff, which I hadn't before either. And she just got a relationship. You might have to move on. I would walk right. away. And you know what? Here's what you can do. You when I said to- I want to try kissing, she said, "Ha ha ha! You want to try? Really? I didn't think that all." And then I wrote, "So, but, but you yeah. kissed. You kissed. She kissed you first. Here's but my. Here's I what, wrote Emma, that because she told no, me she was having dirty martinis. I think, so I take that as an invitation Emma, you're to gonna get have flirty. To, this is what you're gonna have to she do. She said dirty. You're She's gonna like, have to." You're going to have to say this. Listen, I, I understand you just got out of a relationship. It's been three years. 
I'm it's down to you and a sex more. robot and let's no, pick it up a not notch. About sex robot. <laughs> you just say, like, I'm looking for this. If that's not what you're up for, then let's just be friends and hang when, when it happens. And then balls officially in her core. But the, you, I think you got to move on. To who? It I don't even have any have prospects. To be anybody right now. Oh, and I lied to her because oh, she, she asked how long I had been sober and I didn't want to be like 30 days. So I said eight months, which isn't true. But is she, she also that's sober? Not, she goes down and on. So she knows what's up. So you can't just be like, oh, it's like not a thing. Like, right. Whatever. And she's super respectful and cool about that, which I totally Am I dig. coming off mean right now? Okay. I don't think so. Okay, good. I don't think so, no. All right. I'm but, just defensive of Emma because I love Emma so much I and I don't like it. what this girl's doing to your head. Yeah, that's but, you but that's know, on me, not her, I think. No, I, I feel like you're presenting what you what you want. To try kissing. Uh, uh, also, why are you are like, how are you a 45-year-old you, businessman who lives in Midtown and has like weird deviant sex sometimes on Craigslist, but also like a 13-year-old girl? I know. And then I was like, after I texted I want to try kissing, I put my phone in an airplane and like threw it. I was next to her. <laughs> I, was like, I was next to her. We were at the, we were at the cellar and then she's like, that's it. I'm not responding to her anymore and yeah. put it on airplane mode. And then seconds later, back on the phone. Yeah. Texting is hard. Modern relationships are like not easy. Texting well, is very, I texting mean. Texting is incredibly hard because you can't, there's no italics or bold and there's no that's way what emojis to read are for. inflection. Emojis so are you, for that. Yeah, absolutely. Are you dating anyone, Patty? Oh, Absolutely not. No. Well, that's I mean, not true. Okay. All right. Patty and I are in the same situation. Patty was trying to judge me for being in this situation. I wasn't judging. And then you. when I led the way, suddenly Patty's off talking to Australia. So I'm talking Ooh. to this guy in Australia. Nice. And so we met on the gram, on the Instagram. Same. Huh. He, I think I actually DM'd him for uh, whatever it was. We were DMing each other and we were like messaging on Instagram. What's the first DM? You say, hey. I send heart emoji or something. Like heart yeah, eyes. Yeah. I, well, I normally send like, uh, if someone like liked my photo or something like that, I like send the heart with sparkles specifically. Nah, of course. Because that's and like then, a less heart. Like right. Less that's less heart. than just like a heart. You know, it's like, a, ooh, let me be right. cute. And then I send the peace sign. Like, hey, what's up? And then we just started talking. And then randomly we started talking on Facebook. And then we started FaceTiming like right off the bat sort of. So it was weird. So we we got to know each other like fairly well. And then I went to Australia and I was in Australia and we took the opportunity to meet up in Sydney. And did you go to Australia to meet him? I, no, I did not. I just I just happened, happened to be, be in, in the Australia. area. I just happened to be in the he area. Was working. Yeah, okay, I was yeah. working. So I went to Australia for work. Uh, we met up. We only got like less than twenty four hours together. So do you came... guys do you guys think that when you meet up with people and it's long distance and it's these like condensed amount of times, so do you think it's like charges the yes, romance? Yes. Because yes, it's like yes. you know, there's like a countdown clock. Yes. Absolutely. You're like we our time is expiring and, and be this careful is, it feels, with that. Yeah. So I mean, but, I went off the deep end. Because I'm it can madly do, in love. It can create like this like you know it, it can create this like heightened sense of stuff because are you the, saying this is what's happening with me in the spaniard i don't know but just be aware of it i mean yeah. you I, know i definitely think that the distance creates this you know i think the romantic in everyone wants to be like oh this is gonna work out and it's like it's perfect i think like you guys and, are both talking about me but not no to i'm me. not I'm, I'm literally talking just from my experience you know we met up and <laughs> immediately we were just like making out like crazy <laughs> and you know but the thing is like we didn't fuck like, like we didn't fuck. Good like for you. both of us kind of uh, like non-verbally Did agreed you blow that him? like now wasn't. Of course, right? Oh, uh, but no, he didn't get yeah. off though. No oh. one, no one came. No really? one came. Really? Yes. people. And don't that didn't come. make you feel weird. Uh, no, I, it it made me feel a little frustrated, but also maybe that adds to this. Why didn't like, he come? It just because it didn't really. Uh, I was very tired. Yeah, I was working. I was like very tired, and I had just eaten a burrito before we went to bed. Like mm. sex wasn't happening right. that night. You know. Yeah. So, see, that's what it's like dating when you're older. Because, like, if we were, when we were, like, in our, I bet if you were in your, like, the younger you are, it's like you're, like, trying to, like, impress the person and, like, put on a real show. But, like, as you get older, you're like, I ate a burrito. I'm tired. I do bring tap you shoes know? with me every time I go to a hookup. That <laughs> I bring red curtains, tap shoes, a spotlight. I have a little band. Well, you take care of yourself, so you've got the energy. They present me. And, ladies and gentlemen, the one you've been waiting for, the mysterious lady of the 1920s. Here Welcome, blow, yeah. Matteo Lane. <laughs> Da! I come out like Judy Garland. I sing That's Entertainment. I gotta We have um, like a ton of questions too. You guys want to get to some questions? Sure, let's. Uh, I, I would love to. Excellent. We get a lot of propositions from Mateo. 
that's the first one that pops up. And they're very I believe they, that. Yeah. If I post something on Insta on my Instagram immediately, it's like, who's the guy with the arms? It's well, like, after the podcast, someone like, asked but what me. What about me? Someone asked me if they if I wanted to get together. They said you were even cuter in person. Work. Oh, the girl, the yeah, cute girl. I know. Her. Well, I she she was in San Francisco, but that's so nice. No one's and then she said I want to take you out sometime. No, she never was really in my cute. life. No, yeah, she was cute. No one, no one. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is other thing with the person in New York. I said. Uh, do you want to get vegan food sometime? Because she's a vegan, because obviously. And then she said, yeah. And then she sent me a restaurant. Pretty expensive restaurant to suggest. Where was it? There's a really uh, good one It's called Dirt I Candy. Recommend. It was good. That's but it's, like a, it's a prefix later. one where I was kind of like, it was good. But I was like, if you're going to send, if someone says, do you want to get dinner? And then you make a recommendation, you should send like a more mid-price <laughs> one, I feel. Eh, you know. It's a really high standard. I guess she's just, you know, trying to see where your head is at. She's like, if she takes me here, she's dating material. Wait, right. what's the question? Okay. Well, so the thing was uh, that he would 100% date Mateo. Um, so that's not really a question. <laughs> and then uh, rec- mm, this was someone applying for a job. Nope, that's not quite. Hi, I've been working for 12 years. <laughs> Let's, yeah, that's not. Okay. You guys obviously do a lot of comedy shows and go to a lot of comedy shows. How do you deal with hecker- hecklers? Are there many or is it rare? What are your favorite instances of comedians shutting down hecklers? Totally just curious, not a professional comedian, just a private one. My mom thinks I'm funny. Thanks. All right, so I'll let you answer first because I clearly have a specific way. I Actually, you know what? I would like you to tell me how you think I deal with hecklers. <laughs> <laughs> and think, do you think I'm nice? I think it would 100% totally depend on the mood of you, the, the kind of day you're having, and the setting <laughs> of the room. That's what I would think. And then I think you would like tear them down, and but in a funny way. Yeah, I do, I do I do get pretty yeah. What kind of heck do you get hecklers that are like cuz sometimes people don't realize they're heckling and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, and then what happened?" And you're like, "Oh, cuz it's just distracting from the well, joke." Well, then I say, "Shut the fuck up." Right. And then everyone laughs. Right. But there was one See, guy I last week that. at the stand who was so loud. He just kept talking and talk. I was hosting. He kept talking. Talking to you? And then to his friend next to him, I said, excuse me. I said, there's a show happening. And he goes, "Um, well, he asked me a question. I said, no one gives a shit if he asks you a question, okay? Where are you from? He goes, Romania. I was like, listen, Romania. I was like, you came to a show. Everyone, there's 80 people in this room. Half of them had to get babysitters. Half of them could have been somewhere else. They paid a lot of money. They're sitting down. They want to watch a show. Everyone else have a good time. You're the only one in the room talking. If you don't think that's weird, Weird, then that's that's embarrassing for you. If you want to have a little conversation with your friend, get up, go outside, have your conversation, and come back in. But right now, there's a show happening, so thanks for making it awkward, making everyone uncomfortable. You understand? Woo! And then he goes, so very kind. Yeah, very kind. But yeah. That, but but the thing very is, gentle. here's the thing too. If you and this is some things that people don't learn. You you like also you, it's some good people can get too mean, but and you I can think, do that, and that's like in line with your character. Yeah, and if people I just laugh. started doing that. It would be like it. If I get mad at someone, it comes out of nowhere. Well, the thing is, like, you have to do it in a way where it's like, I've seen people get too mad too have easily. Have you been there for this, Patty? I've been there for a couple of yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Bob the Drag Queen always says that yeah. I can't get on stage without yelling at someone. But the thing is, like, the audience <laughs> is laughing. So I'm making sure I'm keeping the room going. Right. But the problem is, if you don't, this sounds so crazy, if you don't show your strength, they will continue to walk over you. Absolutely. And so if you... If it's just like a relationship. Yeah. So you Once have they to, realize you have to they can do that... that you have to assert dominance and yes. say, this is the show, this is how it works, right. and you will be kicked out if yes. you keep talking. I had to go on stage one time as someone was getting kicked out. Ugh. Security's coming in, pulling them out, and I'm literally on stage, like, singing opera. And everyone's, like, half looking, like, what the fuck is this gay guy doing on stage? The other half is like, what is happening with the security over there? So I just sang the song from Sound of Music. I was like, so long, farewell, <laughs> Vita saying goodbye. A good club will have security. So clubs that have security, then when you're heckled, you're like, you feel so much more confident because it's like, I'm going to deal with this, but the backdrop is this person's going to get kicked out. The cell security is the best. The best. I was hosting and I had a guy that was heckling where it really depends what kind of, he wasn't heckling, but he was up front and he was really drunk and he was talking to me, but what was frustrating, the whole audience couldn't hear him. So it looked like psycho for me to be that agitated by him. But he said something, he like made a couple, he kept saying something about Ellen and and then he said something that was like kind of so provoking you. Yeah, he was provoking me. And then he I like I was like, you know, you're going to get removed. And then he was like, all right, all right, all right. And then he got removed. So it was just like pretty quick. But if security hadn't been there to me, that would have been the worst kind of heckler. Yeah. He's just like a belligerent drunk guy. But he he got to me. He like it bothered me. So, Usually I can deal with him in a funny right. way. Like there was this guy that was like, I love Trump. And then. I made a bunch of jokes and like it was fun and 
he ended up being like, I love you. So we had a good time. And then someone else like went into him and got the guy kicked out. But if someone says something that really is homophobic, that can, ca- or how I look. Well, Trump supporters one time when I was on stage started, yeah, they, they were clear Trump, Trump supporters. Trump supporters love to heckle. No surprise and, there. Yeah. And um, Trump. They said, well, I was doing my pharmacist joke, and I was like, oh, I hate pharmacists. And he goes, my wife's a pharmacist. And I said, okay. And then we started talking, and I was like, she was like, I do IVs. And I was like, oh, so you're better than a pharmacist. And then he got angry and goes, my wife's a pharmacist. What do you do? And I said, I'm doing my job right now. Right. Real time. And the audience started dying, because I was like, you couldn't have asked a stupider question. Right. What do you do? Well, you paid for the ticket. You're sitting down. There's a spotlight on you me, and math. a sign behind me that says, Comedy Seller. Like, I, it's pretty clear what I do. I, I go, actually, you know, I'm just a firefighter. And I walked someone and brushed <laughs> their hair, and I said, Oop, fire's out. I was like, you're an idiot. That's the stupidest question you could have asked. Do you remember the first time you ever heckled? Um, first time I was ever heckled. No. I don't really remember. I don't remember it. One time, this co- there was a joke that I've done that usually like gets a really good response. A w- and someone went, uh, that's not a... Someone, not a he- that's the worst sound you can that's hear That's the worst comedy. sound. Like, I'd, I'd rather, rather a heckle. Someone not like something. Someone going like, oh, because that's like belittling. And then if it's like a whole sea of people doing that, then... I really hate the, oh. That's the You're like, worst. oh, what? Am I coming off mean today? I feel like Not I'm coming off mean today. Hamda, what do you think, Pat? Hamda, I don't know. I mean, I'm around you a lot, so it just is normal. I don't think you're mean. I've been with my boyfriend for two years. I'm a cis bi woman, and he's a dude, just for context. He struggles with a lot of social anxiety. I try to be understanding when he gets nervous, but sometimes it hold him, holds him back in social situations, and I get frustrated. For example, when we visit my parents, he does this thing where he's talking to my parents. He won't look at them. He'll look at me and act like he's talking to me when he's addressing them. Ugh. He doesn't do this with anyone else. He's always uncomfortable around them, particularly my dad. But this is not making it better because I'm starting to, to. It's starting to bother them too. Yeah, I've tried talking to him about it, but it's starting to get really frustrating. He just avoids the topic and keeps doing it. I was wondering if you guys have any experience dating people who are socially anxious, and you have any advice for who, for how to proceed. Any ideas are appreciated. Um, I will talk to him, but it has it hasn't been helping so far. That's the question. I do have experience with this, do you? Let me hear it, because I don't so have a So the thing lot. is, it's really hard. If he's only doing it with your parents, that's interesting, because it means that he's not... I mean, if he there's something about your parents that are, is just making him really nervous. I've dated people that aren't, like, friendly to other people or are, like, really super, super shy. And it's tough, because then that can come across as rude, and people are like, oh, the person you're with isn't very nice. Or with my mom, they'll be like, it seems like they're not very interested in me. If he's making... If he's not on the spectrum and he's ma- able to make eye contact with other people... He needs to, like, grow up and make eye contact with your parents. I, I think you're completely justified in being annoyed by that. I have, like, no response to this. I think it just sounds like a weirdo. And it always feels bad when you're dating someone who's, like, weird around other people. And it's you're like, God tough. damn it, I like this person. But there's, like, so weird around other people. Yes. Because yeah. I've had that a few times. And it's like, I'm like, eh. uh, I mean, if someone's, I'm a lot more forgiving if someone is uh, just you know, super shy, but that's fine. They can't, you know what I mean? Is but she dating Temple Grandin? Apparently. That's the name of this. We've got to have that. <laughs> that Did Temple Grandin date? No, she doesn't date. She's really, she's a genius. Can I take a tour of your slaughterhouse? That was how um, Claire Danes played her. Claire Danes played her in a movie and Claire Danes' impression of her was like, I, I don't feed me that I can only have pudding or jello. I'm doing Pat Powers' impression of Claire Danes' impression of Temple Grandin. I think Claire Danes is a bisexual. Probably. She did that Latisse commercial, and she uh, didn't really heard much from Claire Danes these days. She wore that dress last year at the Met Gala that gl- that was glowy. Oh, yeah. She looks beautiful. Yeah. Was that a Christian Siriano dress? I don't know. Oh, it was pretty. It looked like it looked like a straight-from-Disney dress. Was like, she ever a gay icon? No. no. She's not gay icon no. status. No, 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 no. Or Who's I feel the, like I would have known the answer to that gay. question. Thank you. That, yeah, that was that's our episode. Yeah. Patty, when are you going to see the guy again? Uh, I actually, he's coming to the States, I think in March or April. That's and exciting. I am, I have a feeling I will be in Australia in the near future. Work. How long is he going to stay for? Uh, you know, we were kind of talking about it and I don't know. Hmm. There are no plans. And he's going to stay with you? Uh, I mean, probably. That's I would, awesome. I hope so. Yeah. I hope. Fun. So we'll see. That's exciting. Yeah. I'm into it. That's exciting. That's like a, it's always nice to have like have that to look forward to. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. We had a whole long conversation about it, and so we're just gonna like see what's up, give it a moment, 
If yeah. it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, no harm done. That's so. I will. I do appreciate that this person is in New York because when I was doing that, I was dating someone in Boston, and there's Boston's like a tough logistical one because like if it's like Australia or Spain, like that's like really far. But with Boston, it's like it's close enough that you can kind of make the trip regularly, but it's like still kind of a trip. So I was going like every other week and that just... I won't date guys in Queens, but I will date you if you live in Spain. Exactly. And that actually (laughs) makes sense. Literally, Brooklyn, I'm like... Ooh. Ooh. That L train goes down a lot, Heaney. But the, but Australia, see you down under. It, yeah. And I tell told- Bindi Irwin I don't <laughs> like her. Uh, we gotta go. But and that makes sense to me that those dating logistics. Yeah, makes sense. But if anyone has any tips on long distance dating, we'd love to hear. Yes, please, please. Thank you guys. Bye. I love everyone. <laughs>